There are well over 55,000 coaches worldwide. Half of them are business coaches, and the majority of them also concern themselves with culture coaching. And that isn't very surprising, because the success of the company is very clearly and directly linked to the engagement that employees have and the pursuit of that specific goal that the culture should support. See, corporate culture plays a vital role in that, and it is incredibly difficult to establish a good culture already at the best of times. And if you then add the remote working environment, if you work with a team that is remote or even lead a team that is remote, it becomes even more difficult. By the end of this video, you will understand exactly what corporate culture is. You will understand what is important to consider. And I will also leave you with practical tips in three different areas that you can implement today and that will increase your employee engagement in less than 30 days. In order to get there, what we need to do is define what corporate culture is. We need to understand how we implement a good corporate culture. And we also need to understand what it means in practice for a remote working environment. So let's get started. First of all, we need to see what a definition of a good corporate work culture is. And if I look into Google and I did a little Google search here, it comes up with things like facilitate happiness and better performance and creating more loyal employees. And those are all very valid arguments. But let me simplify this definition a little bit for you. A good culture is one that works for a very specific group of people. It works to pursue a specific goal and it also works at a very specific time. Let me explain what I mean by this. Well, I look back into my history and I worked for a number of employers, but two were standing out. One was an organization that you would probably describe as a dog-eats-dog -dog culture. So it was quite aggressive in nature and probably not as extreme as some of the things that you can see in a movie, but it was very competitive. And then I compare that also with another employer where everybody was very friendly with each other and it was a very nice and happy environment. Now, what it turned out to be though is that in this first very competitive environment, things were getting done and people were quite proud being part of that community and to succeed in the jobs that they were doing. Whereas in the other company where everybody was very friendly and cuddly with each other, things get rarely done. And so I have to ask you, which one's the better culture? The second thing I mentioned is that it has to work for a very specific goal as well. What do I mean by that? Now, imagine you are in a company where you want to launch a new product. And in that specific scenario, you may want to foster a culture that breeds innovation, that is quite risk-taking, and where in that culture you can try out a number of different things. Now, take those elements and now imagine that you are an airline pilot. Innovation and risk-taking and trying things out are surely not the words that you'd like to hear in that scenario. And this is why it's also very important to consider the very specific goal for the culture, because what might be a very good culture to pursue one goal could be incredibly bad, like in our example, in another company. The final thing in our definition was about a specific time. See, different scenarios require a different approach. You might very well love to have a culture of collaboration, where everybody has their own input to a solution. But if you're suddenly in a crisis scenario, you don't have time for that. You need to make sure that decisions are made fast, that the team gathers behind you, and that your decisions are executed quickly and rapidly. Completely different culture because it's a different time. Here's the thing, if we now start to look at remote work specifically, it all becomes about awareness. Awareness who we are doing it with. Awareness about what we are trying to achieve and also how we achieve that most efficiently. When we started to go home and no longer be in the office and no longer have all our colleagues around us, a few very interesting things happen. The first one is that we start to feel invisible. 
See, you're still doing the work, but now there are no people around you that really witness the work other than maybe when you are on a Zoom call. So as a manager in that situation, we need to be aware of it. We need to be far more active of acknowledging the work that our staff, that our employees are doing, to give them a pat on the back, to say, hey, great job on that. And for that to happen, you have to look closely. You can't be in your own little bubble. You need to be paying close attention also to the details of what your staff is doing. And when you do that, then you can comment more specifically on the work they do, and then they feel less invisible. Hey, this next one is a little bit more difficult because you might have to accept that things are a bit less efficient and it isn't an excuse for mediocrity. Great example, the other day I was back in the flight simulator. We have to do that as commercial pilots every six months just to revalidate and to prove our competency in certain areas. And because of all the travel restrictions that we see worldwide, you may imagine that I fly a lot less often than I would otherwise do. And that leads to not a less safe flight, but it leads to the fact that you have to think a little bit more about certain things. And that is the same in an organization. So working remotely, especially if it's new due to the pandemic, means that it may not be as efficient as before. And that's okay. We have to live with that because on the other hand, if you want to just strive for efficiency, well, then you end up with overworking yourself, overworking your employees. And that ultimately doesn't increase productivity either. Here's something you can do to mitigate that though. You have to tell your team that it's not only okay, but it is expected of them to share out the work funny thing, but it's so easy in these days to try to do everything ourselves. You know, it's difficult to explain something over the phone or over a Zoom call again, how they should do a certain thing or to explain a task of what needs to be done. And so we often go back and say, well, I might as well do that myself. But make clear to your team that it is expected of them to share out the work because ultimately that helps productivity not only because you are sharing the work and sharing the pain but you're also building a better community with each other here's another thing don't forget to celebrate see we get onto a call we get onto a zoom meeting we send a text and it's all business right because that's what we are expected to do but that would never happen if we were in the office together. Because if it's somebody's birthday, you all gather around in the kitchen. You celebrate the birthday, have a piece of cake. And we need to do that when we work remotely as well. We need to reintroduce the personal component into our business environment as well. So don't forget to celebrate. Whatever it is, birthdays, achievements in the team, milestones that you have achieved in a project, make sure that every week, at least once, you find a reason to celebrate. Now, creating this culture is extremely hard, especially when you work remotely. And you may still find yourself in a situation where you ask, why is my team not performing? And if that's the case, then you may want to watch the video that is on the screen right now. It deals exactly with that type of topic. Before you go, hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Also make sure that you subscribe to the channel when you enjoy the content. And I will see you over there in the other or in the next video.